is our co-main event of the evening in the light heavyweight division, Jared Warren versus Jomi Escoboza. And Sean, both these guys usually have a fairly good reach advantage, not in this situation, very similar everywhere. Height, reach, a little bit of a height advantage for Escoboza, but that's not as big of a deal as a reach advantage, which is not there. So this is gonna be about Styles, who's able to land their punch in first, and implement their game plan. That's who's gonna win the fight. Jomi Escoboza, 1-0 in BKFC, 7-0 overall in the sport of bare knuckle. He's also had four pro MMA bouts. In our fighter meeting, Escoboza told us he has put a big focus on improving his cardio and training for this co-main event. Escoboza said, I want to use consistent, calculated pressure. He wants to dictate the range, pace, wants to cut off the ring. He doesn't want to let Jared fight when he wants to. He wants to control exactly when and where the fight happens. Wants to make Jared step in with that big punch and count him as he does it. Escoboza used the word sniper to describe Jaron Ward. He said he is a sniper, one punch at a time. What he does not do well is put his punches together. He feels like he has tails. He sees when his opponent is gonna throw that big left hand. When he sees that coming, he can step in with his punches. He's got a longer reach, he can land first and hurt his opponent. Also a veteran of three pro MMA bouts. Warren said his primary focus in training for this co-main event was intelligently closing distance. Warren said, normally I'm an outside fighter. I want to be more on the inside, four, five, six punches, but then exit intelligently. Exactly, not one shot at a time. He knows that's what people see in him. He's a one punch guy. Wants to get inside, land those punches, get out without taking any damage. Or instead of Jomi Escoboza, he's talented, but he's never been tested in bare knuckle, and he has never fought anyone at my level. And by that, he means he's never had his chin tested. He hasn't seen him get hit. We talk about that. You got to be a good hammer, good nail, be able to do everything. He doesn't think his opponent can take a punch, and he wants to prove that tonight. To get our co-main event of the evening started, Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now set for the Co-Main Event! Scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the light heavyweight division. Presented to you by BetOnline.ag. Introducing you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight, he wears galaxy print trimmed in red and gray. He stands six feet three inches tall. His official weight, 184 and one half pounds. He holds an uncontested, undefeated bare knuckle record at seven and oh. Fighting out of Sunrise, Florida, by way of the Dominican Republic, formerly known as the Archangel. He is now the official BKFC hitman, Jomi Escobosa. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears black and silver. He stands six feet, one inch tall. His official weight, 185.8 pounds. His bare knuckle record stands at three victories, opposite two defeats. Fighting out of Tampa, Florida. Here is Jared, Captain Deadpool Warren. And our referee in charge of the action, Andrew Glenn. Jomi Escoboza said 
My jab is my key to victory. It sets up my entire offense. I'm going to pick apart Jared Warren. Round number one. Blue trucks for Jomi Escavoza. Black trucks for Jared Warren. There's the jab doubling up as Escoboza. Long jab again from the southpaw stance. Jared looks very relaxed right now. Just waiting to throw that big left hand. See the low crouching stance from Warren off the jab left hand. Warren, big left hand, right hand, big swing from Jared Warren. Escobosa resetting center circle, hands high. Left hand landed, that threw a smile on the face of Escobosa. Escobosa now turns, shakes his head no. Jab to the body, not there for Escobosa. I mean, Escobosa looked like he's very much just wanting to throw that right hand. You ain't even really fitting to throw that left. Warren pulling back that left hand. 50 seconds remaining round number one. This is our co-main at 185 pounds. Right hand can fully land from Warren. Still took Escobos off his striking line. Man, seems like every time Jared Warren lands a punch, Escobos goes flying backwards. I don't know if his feet aren't there or if he just get hit hard. Into the clinch. Easy separation for Andrew Glenn. Neither fighter interested in maintaining the clinch in that last sequence. 15 seconds remaining round number one. Get it to the clinch. Escobosa with his back against the ropes. No punches thrown by either fighter in the clinch again. The bell, the end of round one. There did seem to be a little bit of a power difference right there. Escobosa, whenever he's in there throwing punches, every time Warren hit him, it kind of knocked him back quite a bit. Let's just see if Escobosa can calm down and slow the pace down a little bit and relax. Keep him a little bit more balanced out there. Jahan Wakefield in the corner of Jared Warren. Warren first up to scratch, joined at the scratch line by Jomi Escobosa, round number two. Long jab, not there to the body for Escobosa. A lot of feints by both guys. Step in left hand. See the southpaw versus southpaw. Double jab from Escobosa. Underhook snatched by Warren. Well, his backer against the ring ropes. Neither fighter showing any interest in fighting in the clinch thus far in this bout. Nah, nothing wants to be thrown out there. Both guys want to land big punches from the outside. Show me, looks like he wants to control the pace. Throw those jabs. Not really big punches, just jabs. Just control the distance. Very slight swelling under Warren's right eye. One minute remaining, round number two. There's the left hand and the right hand by Warren. Escobosa resetting, back to the center circle. Overhead right from Escobosa doesn't fully land. Little counter right there. Long straight jab from Escobosa. Now 35 seconds remaining, round two. Duck cover from Jared Warren. Double unders. Right hand partially landed from Escobosa. He said jab, he continues to try and dictate the pace with that. Pretty much the main punch he's throwing. Escobosa running through with those punches into the clinch. 
Maxwell right to the body from Escoboza before the separation by Andrew Glenn. Closing seconds, round number two, overhand right. Warren walking through that left hand. Longer straighter punches from Escoboza just before the bell. We move to round three. Very awkward style for both these guys. It makes for a difficult fight. They're not really finding the rhythm. They're not finding any openings. Make sure, make sure your hands is up. Okay? If you notice when you press, hey, if you notice when you press him, what happens? Sean, in a fight like this, when it's difficult to find much offense, I feel like it's usually the guy pushing forward who might be getting the nod. So I look for both these guys to start pushing forward and throwing more punches, even if they're not landing. I feel like if you can push your guy backwards in a tight round, that's what the judges see. Wouldn't mind seeing when they are getting into the clinch, maybe somebody trying to keep a hand free, trying to throw some punches, trying to utilize anything you can because this is a very close, very competitive fight. But neither, neither fighter is able to land big punches at this point. Round number three. Slight forward movement from Jared Warren to start the third round. Skaboza heavy on his back foot. There's the jab, 1-1-2 one, one, from Warren. Bouncing this step now of Jomi Escoboza. There's the right hand. That backs off Escoboza, circles out. 90 seconds remaining, round three. Good left hand again, Escoboza shakes his head no. Some of the best punches we've seen though right now from Warren. Another left hand, clever from Jared Warren. Swelling getting a little more severe under Warren's right eye. Duck under again on the entry hook. So it seems like any time, any time besides the jab is thrown by Jeremy Warren's pretty good at avoiding that. That jab that gives him problems. Oh, but he's doing real good countering that now. Long stick jab from Escoboza. Level change, good right hand, landed from Escobos into the clinch. 45 seconds remaining round three. Warren again, the level change. Left hand just missed with the uppercut, land with that left and that right hand. More left hands, underhook, snatched by Escoboza. It was active, that's why Andrew Glenn allowed those punches from Warren to the head. Escoboza sticking out his jab. Big shots to the body for Warren. Closing seconds, round number three of our co-main. Left hand again, clever for Warren just before the bell. We move to round four. I felt like that was some of the best work we've seen from J.R. Warren so far in this fight. Landed some good left hands in that round. Like I said, very difficult to see how the scoring is done right here. Don't want to touch on it again about the no live scoring, but uh, we will. But we'll be good to know what the scores are. I'd like to know, and I'm sure the fighters would like to know how they're going to have to react, how they're going to have to change things, what they're going to have to do. They don't have that option, so they're just going to have to go out right now, assuming that you're losing this fight, and try to do whatever you can to change the pace of the fight right now. I feel like Jared Warren really has found a home for that left hand. Waiting for Jomi to throw that jab and then come right back with the overhand left. It's working very well for him. Jomi's gonna have to do something different right now. Maybe throw the one, two instead of just that one. Instead of continuing to throw the one, 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 maybe throw that one, two a few more times. Make Jared Warren walk into that too. Jomi Escoboza first up to scratch to start round four. Escoboza looking for the jab to the body. Southpaw versus Southpaw, 185 pounds in our co-main. Jared Warren versus the 7-0 Jomi Escoboza. Double jab, left hand right back from Warren. Warren to the entry. 
So right there, I'd like to see Warren keep throwing punches. You're grabbing, and you're in a good position to keep hitting your opponent. The theme, though, of virtually no punches in the clinch from either fighter continues. There's a good sequence. Right hand, left hand, right hand from Warren. Escoboza trying to throw straight with the right hand, now driving Warren back against the ring ropes. Both fighters based here in the state of Florida have their supporters. See, right there when he's underhooking is J1. There's that good left hand once again. Very good hand from Warren on the left. So right there, keep punching right there, both guys. Right, gentlemen, right. Quick separation from Andrew Glenn. And Escobosa's face is extremely clean for getting hit with a lot of punches right there. Got a lot of good left hands. This has been a very animated crowd all night. Double slip on the virtual tackle from Jomi Escobosa. This crowd especially animated because the supporters sounding as though they're pretty evenly split between Warren and Escobosa. Final seconds, round number four. There is the bell. We move to the fifth and final round. Ooh, close fight, Sean. <laughs> you can tell both these guys right now very tired. I think whoever, you never know, whoever can get together this round might have a good chance of winning. The boos you just heard were because when he walked back to his corner, Chomi Escobosa played to the crowd. Didn't go the way he thought, huh? There were some claps from his fans and a lot of boos from the Warren fans. And there, a good right hand, good left hand. There's a good little series right there. Not the greatest punches, but they all landed. Or most of them landed, I should say. Jomi's going to do something besides that jab, I believe he's going to win this fight. Again, double slip. Virtual tackle again from Escobosa as we saw in round four. I'm going to say more of a takedown, I would say. Escobosa off the jab. Significant swelling under Warren's right eye. It is not a factor. If this were scheduled for eight rounds, <laughs> it probably would be a factor. That jab is really doing damage to Jerry Warren's eye. Is it enough to be winning the fight, though? Warren just misses with the right hand. Escobosa circles out. 60 seconds remaining in our co-main. Escobosa flicking with the right hand. Warren with the left hand, right hand. Again, Escobosa circling out. Overhand left from Warren. Double jab right back from Escobosa with the right hand. Warren starting to look really tired right now. His punches are getting sloppy. Stretch drive now. 30 seconds remaining in this fight. Warren naked on the step in, overhand left. Warren the one, two, right hand. Counter right hand, right back from Escobosa. Well, these guys are exhausted, Sean. Just laying it out there. Again in the clinch. The 10 second clack. Both fighters looking for one more significant punch to land. Short left hands to the head from Warren. The bell, the end of the fight. Now in the hands of the three Florida Athletic Commission assigned judges. How you feeling, buddy? We're winning about it. You got a chance to take a look at you in the back. Our strike.
fighting stance. Both fighters, as you see, at 42%. Head strikes in favor of Jared Warren. More punches, though, thrown by Jomi Escoboza. Again, just like in boxing, in bare knuckle, judges are not counting punches. They are looking for significant strikes landing to legal targets. No cuts. No cuts. No cuts. Look at his face. And within that, there can be wide interpretation. Quality from two high-quality, no high-level fighters, Jared Warren and Jomi Escoboza. Look at the Look at the Jeff Houston is just to the left of our commentary position has received the scores from the Florida Athletic Commission table. Jeff Houston making his way into the ring. Nice moment between Warren and Escoboza. To end all suspense, we send it to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, after completing the scheduled five rounds, here are the score totals from our judges at wingside. Judges Winkapaw and Westerter score the fight 49-46. And J Judge O'Connor, 48-47. All in favor of your winner by unanimous decision. Jared! Captain Deadpool! Previous opponents, listen, uh, all the way up to this one, have always been undefeated. So it's just another day in the office. Looked like the game plan there was to throw overhand lefts, land the hard punch. Is that what it was going in? Yeah, we know he likes his jab. He uses it a lot, so slip it. Slip it was the game plan. Obviously, some still landed, but it's easy to get a black eye in the sport. Another quality win for you. What do you want to do next? <laughs> There's only a couple guys ahead of me in the division. I would love a rematch with Doolittle, but I know he's preoccupied. So you got Joe Riggs and Yuli Diaz. Respectfully, I think you guys are both awesome, but you're ahead of me in the winnings. The only other guy is Mundell, but we trade together. He's my boy, so unless it's going to be six figures, I ain't. All right, congratulations on a fantastic win. Thank you. In his home city, Tampa, Florida, Jared Warren showing his class against Jomi Escoboza, who entered 1-0 in BKFC and 7-0 overall in the sport of bare knuckle. 4-1, 4-1, 3-2 on the judges' scorecards. The winner, by way of unanimous decision, Jared Warren defeats Jomi Escoboza. The world's most exciting combat sport, Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship presents BKFC 32 on Saturday, November 5th. In the main event, the educated hands of Reggie Barnett Jr. knuckle up against the undefeated Gian Herrera. In the co-main event, Jared Captain Deadpool Warren looks to continue his winning ways as he throws hands with the always dangerous J Action Jackson. Watch it live. Download the BKFC app at BKFC.com. Welcome to the new BKFC app. Watch every live Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship pay-per-view event for only $4.99 per month. Enjoy our all-new library of content, including behind-the-scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live Bare Knuckle fights from around the globe. Knuckle up with the new BKFC app, still only $4.99 a month. We have reached our main event of the evening. At stake, the BKFC interim bantamweight title, the champion Jared Grant versus Reggie Barnett Jr., the numbers presented by Crescent Tools. 
height, both about exactly the same. One inch difference, nothing. Reach exactly the same. Weight almost exactly the same, Sean. This has nothing to do with it. This is going to be a fantastic fight, but it's going to be who's able to implement their game plan is going to win, not from the tail of the tape. Junior, six and two in BKFC, a veteran of eight pro boxing bouts, seven pro MMA fights. And our fighter meeting, Barnett said, my key is seamlessly blending boxing with the bare knuckle clinch. Feels like he's one of the best at that. Feels like he cannot let his opponent be comfortable. Doesn't want to win his opponent. He wants to get up first here. Barnett said of Jared Grant, I think he's a pure boxer and not a great boxer at that. And I believe that Grant wants to make this a boxing match. I have more tools in boxing and I have vastly more tools in bare knuckle fighting. He feels like his opponent has never truly been tested. And he says he's going to be the one to test him. One thing I love about what he said, he said, this fight will not end in a decision. Somebody's getting ended. Somebody's getting finished. Somebody's getting knocked out tonight, period. Barnett also told us in our fighter meeting, on the outside, I'll win with my boxing. On the inside, I will absolutely dominate and ultimately take over this fight with my clinch. Definitely something he's done in the past and definitely something he feels like he can do right now. Get inside, push his opponent around, wear him down, and then pick him apart after he's worn down. Reggie looks to download early, look at what his opponent's doing, then turn it on as the fight moves on. Jared Grant enters as the undefeated BKFC interim 135-pound titleist. 5-0 and oh in Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship was a very good amateur boxer, compiling a record of 48 and 7. Again, there's an interim title because BKFC Bantamweight World Champion Johnny Bedford remains out through long-term injury. Grant told us emphatically he feels that he is the true champion, the true number one in BKFC at 135 pounds. He also said in our fighter meeting, my key to victory is constant forward pressure behind smart counter punching. Wants to push his opponent backwards. He doesn't feel like Reggie Barnett has shown in the past. When he backs up, he could win. Feels like if he counters, backs him up, recipe for victory right there. We get this world title fight started with Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now set for the main event. Scheduled for five two-minute rounds for the interim BKFC World Bantamweight Championship. Presented to you by OnlyFans. Sanctioned by the Florida State Boxing Commission, Executive Director Patrick Cunningham. The three judges scoring our main event, Daniel Torres, Troy Winkaba, John Westerter. And the third man inside the squared circle, our referee in charge of the action at the bell, Chris Young. And now, with our bare knuckle fans watching live worldwide on the BKFC app, from the sold out Florida State Fairgrounds. Fight fans of Tampa, it's time to knuckle up! 
Introducing you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight he wears white and blue. He stands five feet, six inches tall. His official weight, 134 and one half pounds. His impressive bare knuckle record stands at six victories opposite two defeats. He is a two-time bantamweight title challenger and steps into the squared circle as a world title challenger for the third time. Fighting out of Chesapeake, Virginia, here is Reggie Easy, educated hands, Barnett Jr. And across the ring, his opponent, fighting on the blue corner. Tonight he wears black and blue trimmed in white. He stands five feet, seven inches tall. His official weight, 134.4 pounds. He is undefeated in the square circle at five and oh. Here is your defending, undisputed, interim BKFC World Bantamweight Champion from the 305, Jared Grant told us, I believe Reggie Barnett Jr. is at his best when he is coming forward. I cannot let that happen. I have to stay technical with controlled aggression. Round number one. Faint off the scratch line for the BKFC interim bantamweight title is Jared Grant. He's in the black and blue trunks, white and blue trunks for Reggie Barnett. This is his third BKFC title fight. Immediately to the body on the inside, and there's the clinch, half tie plumb down the underhook and the turn by Barnett. A lot of hard wrestling in there, Sean. Very tiring. Hands high and tight for Reggie Barnett off the jab from the southpaw. Stamps right hand. Grant circling out. Holding the center circle is Jared Grant. Double jab from Barnett. Right hand, big swing, the turn again into the clinch goes Reggie Barnett. Quick separation from Chris Young. Soft warning by Young to Barnett, excessive holding. I think he was talking about the push off on the face and then throwing the right hand afterwards. 60 seconds remaining, round number one. This building has been very loud all night. Suddenly it's gone very quiet. <laughs> Everybody's on the edge of their seat. Barnett to the inside, big body work, counter right hand by Grant. Good job by Reggie Barnett being very active in there. Barnett off the jab again. Jab to the body from Barnett. Left hand. See the trap, and now the break from Chris Young. Final seconds, round number one. Straight right hand from Grant. One, two from Barnett. That is the end of round one. Saw right there at the end, a little bit of a odd thing that was going on. Reggie Barnett trying to get a clinch, but Grant did a good job of avoiding it. He talked about that fact that he wanted to make sure he avoided that clinch at all costs. He did it right there. Thing is, he's going to have to start throwing punches as he gets out there, as he counters, as he moves. He cannot just let nothing happen. He's got to score when he does that. The outstanding trainer, Ryan Perez, Really a pioneering bare knuckle fighting trainer in the corner of Jared Grant.
And in the corner of Reggie Barnett Jr., his father, the outstanding boxing trainer and bare knuckle trainer, Reggie Barnett Sr. Both fighters up to scratch as we start round two. Fast start off the scratch line for Barnett. Jab right back from Grant. Active with the combination is Reggie Barnett. We talked about earlier, he, Grant has got to be able to counter that jab, throw that right hand, has not been able to do it so far. You know Reggie's coming in with that jab. Step on the outside, throw the right hand. I know it's easy to say, not easy to do. Barnett staying very heavy. Grant taking himself to the canvas. Obviously a slip, right back to it. Interesting though that Grant did not want to play in that sequence, smartly taking himself to his knee. Duck under from Barnett into the clinch. Push off from Grant. That was effective, creating space. Straight punches forward from Barnett. 105 remaining round two. Big hooks, big shots to the body. Rolled a slip by Krishan. Barnett literally running forward. Counter left hand from Grant. Barnett resetting with 50 seconds remaining round two. Long stiff jab from Reggie Barnett. Straight right hand. Grant's cut open a few places, it looks like there. Slight cut under Grant's left eye, also cut between his eyebrows, just above his nose. Grant was complaining to Chris Young. Chris Young allowing that, feeling it was legal on the overhand trap. It's not a half tie plum, it's an overhand. Either way, active clinch. Straight left hand, Barnett now coming to the inside to the body. Reggie Barnett looking fantastic right now. Everything he's throwing is working for him. Final seconds, round two. Both fighters back in the center circle. Spear of blood on the face of Jared Grant. We move to round three. Wow, Grant is going to have to find a different sense of urgency. He just seems a little too relaxed out there, like the fight is going to come to him and he's going to win. He's going to have to bring it to Reggie Barnett if he wants to win this fight. Reggie just being very slick, very methodical, just continuing to get off first right now, push his opponent backwards. Right He's doing right the there. exact thing that Kid Daddy wanted to do to him. Last week, Reggie Barnett Sr. was at the USA Boxing National Junior Olympics. Tonight, he's cornering his son in a massive fight for the BKFC interim bantamweight title. Round number three, snap jab from Jared Grant. Grant active with his jab. There's the left hook from Barnett. Double jab, 1-1-2 one, one, from Barnett. Again, the flurry from Reggie Barnett. There's the halftime plum. Big shots on the inside. Grant on the hook to separate. Straight right hand. Barnett walked into that. Faint from Jared Grant. Barnett again off the jab. Shots to the body. Chris, you see Barnett willing himself back into this clinch. Barnett is just really firing all cylinders right now. Everything he wants to do is working for him at this point. Mixing everything in very well. Body punches, head punches, clinch work. There was the rear right uppercut on the exit. 60 seconds remaining round three. Punch totals right there. I mean, Barnett just downed it in 42%, but it's just the sheer numbers laying at 39 compared to four right there. Wow. Duck under again. Left hand partially got through from Grant. 40 seconds now remaining round three. One, two off the mark for Barnett. There's the jab. Oh, 
Right hand misses on the overhand from Grant. Step in left hand from Barnett. Barnett suddenly shaking his head no at Jared Grant. Grant with the right hand. Counter right hand again from Grant. Straight right hand from Jared Grant just before the bell. That ends round number three. Another very good round right there for Barnett. I mean, Grant started landing some good punches there towards the end, but Reggie Barnett just kind of hitting on all cylinders right now. He's mixing and he's doing exactly what he talked about, being a complete bare knuckle fighter. Right here, this just shows Reggie Barnett doing a lot of good work inside. Landing punches, look at this. Good comeback right there for Grant, but I mean, you saw the punch totals right there. Barnett's just dominating right now in the stats. I mean, look at Grant leaning back. He looks like a defeated fighter right there. He's gonna have to find a second win if he wants to have a chance to win this fight. Barnett's up to scratch early, he's ready to go. Body language right there says a lot. Round number four. Both fighters throwing off the scratch line. Duck under from Grant. See the feint from Barnett. Jab to the body. Barnett lands the right hand on the entry. Feints again from Barnett, circling out. See the stream of blood down the face of Jared Grant. That cut opened in round number one, as did the cut under Grant's left eye. One ten remaining round four. Grant just missing with that right hand. Long jab by Barnett is the range finder. Grant missing with the right hand. That was looking for the hand trap, trying to catch and return. Good right hand by Grant. Landed that short. Reggie fired back with his own left hand right after the Stiff jab by Barnett. Went from short range and landed. Left to the body. Getting late in our main event. 25 seconds remaining, round number four. The winner claims the BKFC interim bantamweight title, which right now is held by Jared Grant. Looking to make his first successful title defense. When Reggie throws those combos, Grant does a good job of blocking, but he's not able to fire back at anything, just like that. We move to the fifth and final round. I mean, you have to think Grant is down huge on there. He's going to have to get a stoppage if he wants to win this fight. He's going to have to open up right now. Come forward. He can't wait to counter at this point. He needs to get off first. He needs to push Reggie back like he said he was going to do the entire time. He got a good fighting off that back foot. He has not been able to accomplish that at all this fight. decision to claim this interim title trying to successfully defend it but Reggie Barnett has certainly had his moments again 
No real time, no open scoring here in Florida. We're not privy to the judges' scorecards. But Reggie Barnett Jr. has looked very sharp through four rounds. Fifth and final round, and down goes Derek Grant. Uh, Grant. I don't think he wants to get up here. Can't see. Wow! Grant kind to call timeout. No indication yet from Chris Young. The corner is furious, say you can't call timeout. Ryan Perez grants corner. His chief second on the apron. No indication yet from Chris Young. If it's a punch, this fight is over. Victory for Barnett. If it's ruled as an illegal eye poke, then this would be a technical decision, and we would go to the judges' scorecards if Grant cannot continue. Let's see the reaper. It looked like a punch to me, but. Definitely wasn't a head, but was it a thumb? There is replay here allowed in Florida by the outstanding Florida Athletic Commission. They are checking the replay now. The question, was that a thumb, which would be an illegal blow, which would most likely lead us to the end of the fight and a technical decision? Or if that's a legal punch, that's the win via TKO for Reggie Barnett Jr. We go I to Jeff Houston. Be blood, and none of it is Ladies and gentlemen, due to an accidental eye poke, this fight has stopped in the fourth round, and we will now go to our judges' scorecards for the decision. All three judges score the fight 40-36 in favor of your winner by unanimous decision and interim bkfc world bantamweight champion reggie easy educated hands by world's most exciting combat sport, Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship presents BKFC 32 on Saturday, November 5th. In the main event, the educated hands of Reggie Barnett Jr. knuckle up against the undefeated Gian Herrera. In the co-main event, Jared Captain Deadpool Warren looks to continue his winning ways as he throws hands with the always dangerous Jay Action Jackson. Watch it live. Download the BKFC app at BKFC.com. Welcome to the new BKFC app. Watch every live Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship pay-per-view event for only $4.99 per month. Enjoy our all-new library of content, including behind-the-scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live Bare Knuckle fights from around the globe. Knuckle up with the new BKFC app, still only $4.99 a month. And you see the numbers as we go back to bare knuckle at 125 pounds. Abdiel Velasquez versus Gian Herrera. Our tale of the tape is presented by Royal Kratom, 100% natural pain relief. Now, if you look at this, it seems like everybody's exactly even almost. Height the same, reach fairly similar. The one difference in this is Abby's had a lot more fights. This is his seventh bare knuckle fight. Herrera, this is his first. It could be a huge difference. He is a more experienced combative veteran, but not in this sport. So that could be all the difference in the world. Fight fans of Tampa, we are set for the next fight of the night. Scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the flyweight division. Presented to you by Royal Kratom, 100% natural pain relief. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight, he wears black and white. He stands five feet, five inches tall. His official weight, 125.1 pounds. He holds an impressive MMA record, 10 victories opposite three defeats, and makes his bare knuckle debut tonight. Fighting out of Tampa, Florida. Here is Gian.
And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears gold and black. He stands five feet five inches tall. His official weight, 125 and one half pounds. His bare knuckle record stands at three victories opposite three defeats. Fighting out of Tampa, Florida, by way of Puerto Rico. Here is Abdiel, the nightmare, Velasquez. And our referee in charge of the action, Big Dan Mergliata. All right, gentlemen. Both fighters up to scratch. Give them a chance to get out. Hold on a second. Grab Back to bare bucket, knuckle sir. fighting. Bare knuckle the rest of the way through our main event. Paige Van Zandt versus Rachel right, Ostevich. This gentlemen. is a really Great. intriguing Look battle. 125 pounds. Round number one. And a fast start for Abdiel Velasquez, just as he said he would do off of the scratch line. He's in the yellow and black trunks, black and white for Gian Herrera. And this is a very tough test for Gian Herrera in his first fight, bare knuckle. Fighting a guy with a ton of experience. Good right hand and a counter right down goes Velasquez after he landed. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Put your hands up. Step towards me. You ready? All right, let's go. A new smile on the face of Velasquez. Right back to it, lands the left hand. There's the rear right uppercut from Herrera. Down goes Velasquez again. And it looked like he landed the punch and he fell down five, from it. Six. Seven. Hey, I know you want to put your hands up. All right, baby. This is a phenomenal first bare knuckle round for Gian Herrera. But no one has won anything yet. Velasquez firing back, lands the left hand. Herrera's with his back against oh, the ropes. Break, break, break. Big oh. jacks and crumpling oh, down is Velasquez. We no, might no, be no, through. No. I said break, you hit on a break. I'm called by Dan Mergliata saying those were illegal blows after he called break. That might be true, but the damage is still there. Okay. And he's uh, very hurt right now, man. He needs his break. I would take Go the full time if Ready? I could. Uh, they're not giving him any time. Referees watch how fighters fall. Velasquez crumpled on that last shot, even though it was deemed illegal. Left hand right back. Velasquez still throwing, trying to clear his mind. He needs to utilize that clinch right now. He's hurt. Velasquez, good right hand. Both fighters absolutely bad. Officially three knockdowns now recorded by Herrera here in round one. Hey, no three there. knockdown rule. And he cannot keep trying to punch right there. He's got to get in there and clinch and get to the second round. That's his best option right now. If he gets knocked down again, they might not let it go anymore. More big shots. We'll see how many of the is that. Cannot be saved by the bell in any round. I mean, what a dominating performance so far for Herrera. Bergliotta did not Chris rule that as a knockdown, but keeping a very close eye. Following Velasquez back to his corner. Velasquez in all sorts of trouble. You know, I almost feel like this is a case of like the big brother situation. I mean, he, I mean look at some of these massive shots he's taken. And he just, and he's in there and he's getting caught cleanly and just being dropped. There's a nice clean shot right there. Oh, just right on the chip. Seems like his hands are not quite as fast. His chin's up a little bit more. He's just going with the guy that has a lot more you know, experience at high level. Just like Herrera said. Chris Finders always talk about what they gain when they go down the weight class, but there are elements that you lose to your skill set as well. Well, I always feel like when you go uh, down the level, those guys are faster, you know what I mean? And, and the power is always going to be a, a factor, but it doesn't matter how hard you hit if that guy's hitting you twice as many times. All right, ready? Time, Herrera officially time. recording Knock three two. knockdowns in round number one. Time called is Dr. Don Muzi, president of the Association of Ringside Physicians, chief medical officer for BKFC. The check of Velasquez. Oh, the okay go, from Dr. Total Muzi. Line, now both line, fighters have to scratch. Round two. I would say Velasquez needs to really utilize that clinch a little bit more. Try to wear his opponent out first before he Oh, that's a big left hand. And he just oh, let him hit the ground. And down oh, again. And that is a phenomenal BKFC debut and victory for Gian Herrera. Wow, he looked phenomenal in there. Showed a lot of power and a lot of speed. Hey, school, school, kind of school. Another, another fight starts to break up. No, give me the fucking school. 
Huge disappointment for Othiel Velasquez in his seventh PKFC bout. And here we come with just a barrage of punches right there. Clean shots. All those landed very nicely right there. And he shows some toughness right there, but man, I mean, hit the ground and hopped right back up. His face is a mess right now. Thank you, brother. For some reason, that buzz largely yeah. eluded Gian Herrera. I'm not sure why. Again, the four-fight UFC veteran is phenomenal. Just 31 years old, 10 and 3, and is still active pro MMA career. And that is a message sender in bare knuckle fighting championship. Absolutely. I can't see too many people who are going to be <laughs> lining up to fight this guy. Sometimes people are jumping in the ring wanting to fight him. I don't see that happening. That's a great moment now between these two fighters. They stop Abby fight. You gotta like that, man. Uh, once you get out there, once you settle it, it's over. We go to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, our referee in charge, Big Dan Mergliotta, steps in and calls a stop to this fight at 14 seconds into round number two for your winner by TKO, Gian Herrera. Wow, what a what an entrance to the sport right here. I look forward to seeing this guy fight again, if we can find anybody who wants to fight him. Taking a cut outside of his left brow, Gian Herrera, and that's because Velasquez, through all of that punishment, all those punches, did throw and land, but he simply could not match the pace, the timing, and the power of Gian Herrera. Abdiel Velasquez officially down three times in round number one. He exploded off the scratch line, and then Herrera immediately took control. Gian Herrera continuing through to round number two where he gets the win victorious by way of second round TKO. Gian Herrera defeats Abdiel Velasquez. The world's most exciting combat sport, Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship presents BKFC 32 on Saturday, November 5th. In the main event, the educated hands of Reggie Barnett Jr. knuckle up against the undefeated Gian Herrera. In the co-main event, Jared Captain Deadpool Warren looks to continue his winning ways as he throws hands with the always dangerous J Action Jackson. Watch it live. Download the BKFC app at BKFC.com. Welcome to the new BKFC app. Watch every live Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship pay-per-view event for only $4.99 per month. Enjoy our all-new library of content, including behind-the-scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live Bare Knuckle fights from around the globe. Knuckle up with the new BKFC app, still only $4.99 a month.
downtown Orlando. They call it the happiest place on earth, but tonight we're trading in Space Mountain and the Incredible Hulk for the ultimate thrill ride, Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. And we kick things off with the free view. Three big bare knuckle fights to get you ready for this historic card. Later on tonight, it's Action Jackson versus Captain Deadpool. No, it's not a holiday blockbuster. It's your co-main event of the evening. Then in the main event, current BKFC interim bantamweight champion, Easy Reggie Barnett Jr. takes on the hard-hitting and very hungry Gian Herrera. And welcome to the fabulous Kareem Royale Resort right here in Orlando, Florida, where it is going to be an electric night, folks. We have an incredible stacked card, a lot of bangers on this card. And as I mentioned, we are in the free view. This is where we give you a little taste, but if you want all of it, you got to get the BKFC app. Not only are you going to get tonight's proceedings for $4.99, you'll get two weeks from now in Omaha. You'll get BKFC UK on the 26th, all for $4.99, not to mention all of our past events, et cetera, et cetera, and so on and so forth. There's so much stuff on the BKFC app. Get it right now. It's going to be a great night of fights. With that being said, Let's go ringside right now and get things cracking here with the free view. Sean Wheelock and Chris Lytle. First up, Sean, these are, this is one of those cards that, you know, we don't have titles on the line here, but it could be a sleeper card. We see it all the time. These are the shows that really deliver with some big time fight of the year candidates. Cyrus, I truly believe the BKFC has done an outstanding job of focusing on every weight class, not favoring any. Tonight, the focus is on the smaller weight classes. We'll see one bout at 125, three bouts at 135, culminating with our main event at 135 pounds, Reggie Barnett Jr. versus Gian Herrera. Shooting it over to you, Chris. Let's put a little action on here. Let's put a little cheddar on the line. Now, when you take a look at the odds for the event, What's jumping off the page at you? A lot of good fights right here. A lot of action going on all over the place. The one that jumps out at me, though, is Travis Thompson at even money right there. I know he's fighting the undefeated Diaz, but Travis has fought everybody out there. He's eight fights. You have to go with Travis Thompson in this fight. Now, before the fighters walk, let's take a look at the rules for a bare knuckle fighting championship. All contest five two minute rounds. It's a three judge, 10 point must system. Hand wraps and tape must be within one inch of the bare knuckle. No being saved by the bell. No three knockdown rule. And this is no MMA here. No elbows, kicks, knees, or takedowns. With that being said, let's get to the first fight here on the free view. Mr. Crescent Tools, tell the tape. We will open in the middleweight division. Tony Murphy versus Shane Stapp. You can see here, Sean, uh, very similar in most aspects. It's, a, it's in half reach advantage for Shane Stapp. He's going to want to utilize that because you know Tony Murphy's coming in wanting to land hard punches. Shane Stapp's going to want to pop that jab and keep his opponent away and make him pay every time he steps forward to land those big punches. This is the Pro Combat Sports debut for Shane Stapp. Six and one in his AMI MMA career. He's one and oh in amateur kickboxing. In our fighter meeting, Stapp told us he likes to continually adapt through the fight. He said, I know I want to keep Tony Murphy, my opponent in this middleweight bout, on the outside with my jab. Keep moving laterally, catch, parry, slip shots throughout. One thing he said that I really like, he said, if it does get inside and he has to clinch, he wants to move his opponent and punch right up the end, get him off balance. I thought that was very insightful for somebody who has had a fight yet. Staff said, I think Murphy is going to keep swinging big for the knockout. I have to counter off of those powerful swings, find the openings, straight one twos and utilize excellent defense. Not only that, his number one shot, he wants to land liver shot. He knows he's been hitting the body, he knows it hurts him. If he can land some good shots to the liver, he thinks he can get the knockout. Staff told us if he goes into the clinch, he'll throw big shots. He thinks he can take shots in the clinch. 
He feels that he has the movement. He feels that he has the slickness to win this, not just his BKFC debut, but again, his professional combat sports debut. Well, he really just feels like the main thing with this, just keep touching. As long as you're landing punches, as long as they're hitting your opponent, you're gonna do damage and you're gonna have a good night. This is the BKFC debut for Tony Murphy. He's had six pro MMA bouts. Murphy told us he wants to utilize heavy aggression. He said, I feel I have a mixture of punching power and punching speed. Fast, good chin, heavy handed. He feels like he adapts to whatever he needs to do out there to get the victory tonight. Feels like the main thing he wants to do is stay composed and bring the action. Murphy said, I'm extremely confident with my dirty boxing. I think I can dominate Shane Stapp in the clinch. I'm going to overwhelm him with relentless pressure. From the outside of mid-range, I'm going to keep throwing big overhand rights. The thing is, right now, he has so much confidence because he doesn't think his opponent can hurt him. He feels like he can walk through punches if he needs to. He doesn't want to, but if he has to, he thinks he can do that. To get BKFC 32 started, we send it to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you and welcome to the Carib Royale Orlando Florida. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome to BKFC 32. We begin our preview with five two minute rounds in the middleweight division. Presented to you by OnlyFans. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight, he wears camouflage. He stands at even six feet tall. His official weight, 170.4 pounds. Tonight, he makes his BKFC debut. Fighting out of Inverness, Florida. Here is Shane. Bring the pain. Stand. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears white. He stands 5 feet 11 inches tall. His official weight, 175.8 pounds. His MMA record stands at three victories opposite three defeats. And tonight makes his BKFC debut. Fighting out of Clearwater, Florida. By way of St. Pete, Florida. Here is Tony T. Murph. Murphy! And our referee in charge of the action, Big Dan Mergliata. Tony Murphy told us, I want to be an artist in this fight and quote, free hand. He also said, once I have the momentum, I'm going to go from hard right, to even on. harder on Let's my go, pace. Buckle up. Call of knuckle up from the outstanding referee, Dan Mergliata, round number one. White trucks for Tony Murphy, camouflage trucks for Shane Stapp. Step, you see, with the jabs up boss dance immediately to the inside. And there's the dirty boxing where Tony Murphy feels he can really dominate this fight. Right hand pulled back by Step to the inside into the clinch. No strikes, no strikes. Hey, call for no break from Mergliana. Murphy's looking extremely relaxed out there. He's doing a good job of throwing explosive punches and then relaxing again. Naked right hand landed by Tony Murphy. Big shots again. Shane Stapp. Four. Flat on five, his back is Stapp six, taking the count from Mergliata. He doesn't look eight, like he's getting that shot. No. The count of ten reached and the win in his BKFC oh, debut oh, for Tony I'm Murphy. Here. I'm here. Where the fuck y'all He was excited to get ready for this fight, Sean. He was fired up coming in. He said, you're going to see exactly what I'm made of. And very good opening fight for this guy. Hey, come on a second. Showing the replay right here. I know you didn't do no purpose, and the good thing is, just a couple of clean shots in there. That's all it takes sometimes. Mergliata, after the count, this fight is over. It is definitely Murphy's win. But Mergliata telling Murphy, you did throw that left hand when he was down. 
I know you got caught up in the moment, but you have to be aware. Dude, I've had a hard four. Listen, they're really trying to make I've a point about months, not letting that happen anymore, Sean. We've seen it too many times. I know they're really saying, even if you miss, any time you attempt that, they're going to lose a point from that one. Class and defeat from Shane Stapp. Not protesting that punch when he was grounded. And in the view of Mergliata, it's did that punch matter? That's the main thing, Sean. I think he wasn't going to get up whether that was thrown or not. So I think that's why he continued to you know, do the count and, and let it go like it did. Credit Shane Stapp making his BKFC and Pro Combat Sports debut at age 41. He was certainly game, but Tony Murphy, true to his word in our fighter meeting, said once he had the momentum, he would go from hard to harder. Indeed, he did, Chris. Right, that shit, lead that shit. We go to Jeff Houston. And our referee in charge, Big Dan Mertliata, reaches the count of 10 at 51 seconds into round number one. For your winner, by K.O. Tony T. Murphy. Sean, Tony Murphy comes from a very good camp, and there was a lot of hype about him. I think we're seeing why this guy has a lot of potential. It's deep at 175 pounds in BKFC. It just got deeper with the victorious debut of Tony Murphy. Murphy driving to the inside, the thudding right hands to the victory. The winner by way of first round knockout, Tony Murphy defeats Shane Stapp. Let's go! Tonight only, you'll receive 30% off all Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship merchandise when you use the promo code BKFC32 at BareKnuckleShop.com. Check out the huge selection of merch to choose from with sizes and styles for everyone. You can place your order now at BareKnuckleShop.com. And again, a reminder, you can use the promo code BKFC32 at checkout to get 30% off your entire purchase. Welcome to the new BKFC app. Watch every live Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship pay-per-view event for only $4.99 per month. Enjoy our all-new library of content, including behind-the-scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live Bare Knuckle fights from around the globe. Knuckle up with the new BKFC app, still only $4.99 a month. Florida, our most visited state by far. Big fights in O-Town tonight. BKFC 32 live from Orlando, Florida. Presented to you by OnlyFans. Crescent Tools. Eight Man Strong. And Skillhouse the Movie. Starring 50 Cent and Bryce Hall. How far would you for clout? Let's get to our next bout. Here's the Crescent Tools. Tail of the tank. To the welterweight division we go. Chris Cornelius versus Jafar Fort. You can see here, Sean, everything extremely similar with these guys. One is height advantage, reach advantage, exactly the same. It's going to be who can come out there and implement their game plan, not who has the bigger reach or the bigger height. Jafar Fort set to make his BKFC debut. He is a veteran of three pro MMA bouts. Fort told us in our fighter meeting that he will throw every single punch with the intent to knock out Chris Cornelius in this fight. He said constant forward pressure. I'm going to throw my jab. I'm going to keep moving my head, but I will not stop coming forward. Feels like he's definitely faster than his opponent, and he said he wants to Utilize angles. He feels like this sport is all about angles. He wants to get in there and make sure he's throwing punches where his opponent cannot return fire. Fort said of Chris Cornelius, his opponent in this welterweight bout, he has a good jab. He throws a lot of one-twos, but he falls into a very predictable rhythm. I'm going to parry that jab as I come forward. I will throw my own jab to break through his defense. Look at the Looking to land that good right hand. He feels like he can capitalize. He's got good coaching. Wants to listen to them and stay composed out there. Hey. 
This is the BKFC promotional debut for Chris Cornelius, but he has had one fight in the sport of bare knuckle. He's also had one pro MMA bout. Cornelius told us he is continually working on his jab and his head movement. He wants to get to the inside quickly. He said, I want to fast start off the scratch line, move immediately into the inside, and then work to the clinch. That was his main thing, making sure he fights his fight, not his opponent's fight. Wants the circle into the power, unlike most people, and that's how he gets inside. Chris Cornelius said Jafar Fort has legitimate punching power, but he keeps his hands low. I'll use head movement as I come into the inside and then into the clinch. Once in the clinch, big uppercuts from the halftime plunge. Sean, you talked about he's had a bare knuckle fight already. He feels like it's super important to land a punch early on his opponent who's never been hit with a bare knuckle and make him question why he's even in there. Once again, Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, we are set for the next fight of the night, scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the welterweight division, presented to you by Knockout Gummies. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner, tonight he wears black. He stands 5 feet 11 inches tall, his official weight at even 165 pounds. Tonight, he makes his BKFC debut. Fighting out of Clearwater, Florida, by way of Stamford, Connecticut, here is Jafar Fort Knox. And across the ring, his opponent, fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears black. He stands 5 feet 10 inches tall, his official weight, 163.1 pounds. Tonight, he makes his BKFC debut, ready for bare knuckle fight number two. Fighting out of New Smyrna Beach, Florida, here is Chris Pitbull Cornelius. And our referee in charge of the action, Big Dan Mergliata. Jafar Fort told us, with my aggression, my power punches, I will also uh, no, bring composure on. and right, I will continually right. listen to my corner. Round number one. Black trunks, as you see, for both fighters. Blue glove tape for Chris Cornelius taking big shots. Red glove tape for Jafar Fort. And he records the immediate first round Four, knockdown. Five, six, seven, eight. Can I get up? Nine. Oh. The count of ten reached and a lightning strike That's win in his big. For Jafar Fort, just like that. And I definitely thought Cornelius was going to get up. He looked like he was just waiting like he should have, waiting for the right time to stand up, waiting till the eight count. But then when he tried to get up at eight, his legs still weren't underneath him. People don't understand. It's different when you get hit with the bare knuckle. Just not what you're used to. A glove, it, it spreads that punch out a little bit. Didn't happen here. Chris, as we watch our replay, go back to what Jafar Ford told us in our fighter meeting. I will throw every single punch with the intent to knock out Chris Cornelius. It was just that first straight left that did the damage. Really watch the first straight left that comes right down the pipe, just lands clean, and you can tell that's what really does the damage. Not there, right there. That was when you could just tell, look at Chris Cornelius right there. He's not okay right now, just waiting. Sometimes it's a little bit of a delayed reaction. You can just tell Chris Cornelius did yeah. not like what happened with that first straight punch. Looked like he got cut open now that we can see. And that was outstanding refereeing by the always outstanding Dan Mergliata. Cornelius, as you saw, was up at nine. But Mergliata saw that he was not steady on his feet. That's why Mergliata did not allow this fight to continue. It's not just beating the 10 count. It's beating the 10 count and then being ready to continue safely. Absolutely. Here is Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, our referee in charge, Big Dan Mergliata, reaches the count of 10 at 20 seconds into round number one. For your winner by KO, Jafar Fort Knox. I mean, once again, very impressive debut for Fort. I would like to have seen more because we really didn't get to see enough. However, true to us where he comes out throwing punches with bad intentions the entire time. And can't wait to see him do that again. <laughs> Chris Cornelius wanted a fast start, but the fast start belonged to Jafar Fort. Relentless pressure, huge shots, and the win in 20 seconds. 
Victorious by way of first round KO, Jafar Fort defeats Chris Cornelius. you weigh. I don't care how tall you are. I got these for you right here. Welcome to the new BKFC app. Watch every live Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship pay-per-view event for only $4.99 per month. Enjoy our all-new library of content, including behind-the-scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live Bare Knuckle fights from around the globe. Knuckle up with the new BKFC app, still only $4.99 a month. Tonight, it's Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship 32 from this stunning Caribe Royale in Orlando, Florida. So glad that you're with us watching live around the world. It is our free view. Three prelims in total, still one remaining in our opening hour of BKFC 32. Then at the top of the hour, our main card begins. Eight fights in total. The way to watch it is on the Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship app. Chris, culminating this main card, our main event at 135 pounds, Reggie Barnett versus Gian Herrera. This has all the ingredients to be something extremely special. Absolutely. We've seen Gian Herrera fight many times. Just high pedigree because he's been at the highest level, fought the greatest guys. He's very good, very polished. And his first fight was one of the best debuts we've ever seen. Came in and looked phenomenal, landed hard punches. A lot of people, it takes some time to get used to this sport. It's a little bit different. Not this guy. He came in, landed hard punches from the beginning to the end, and it was only one round. However, Reggie Barnett never looked this good. He's had 10 fights. This is his 10th fight and, and just continues to get better each time. He's only lost two to the champ right now. So this guy is fighting incredibly well right now. Uh, this is a great time for both these guys to fight because has has greatness written all over it. Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship, of course, began our very first event, Cheyenne, Wyoming, June 2nd, 2018. Two fighters on that card on this card, Reggie Barnett, Travis Thompson. We'll talk about Travis Thompson in a moment. He has a really intriguing fight at 135 pounds in, on this card versus the undefeated David Diaz. But Reggie Barnett against Travis Thompson on BKFC <laughs> 1, winning a unanimous decision. This will be his 10th fight promotionally in BKFC. He feels that he has really evolved. Reggie Barnett in our fighter meeting, he's so studious. He's so intelligent. He said, since my last fight, I went back and I looked at clinch fighting. I started with boxing in the 1930s. I looked at different combat sports, including MMA, to see the evolution of clinch fighting. Barnett came to bare knuckle as a pro boxer, also a pro mixed martial artist. He feels that he has brought together those elements and elements from other sports as well to become what he believes is truly a complete bare knuckle fighter. It's unreal, Sean, how this sport is evolving. Like right in front of our eyes right now, you get guys in their first fight, and then their second fight, they're better. Then their fifth fight, they've gotten much better. Now you're getting guys who've been to 10th fight. They're just so much better than they were at the beginning. So they're taking on new aspects. They're learning all aspects of fighting. They're seeing what works and what doesn't and why. And now they're incorporating that into their style. And so you're seeing different levels of fighters. But that being said, there's nothing like getting punched in the face by a really hard punching guy. That's what Gian Herrera is. Gian Herrera comes to BKFC after a four fight run in the UFC. Also fought once in the outstanding Russian promotion, ACA. A-level career in mixed martial arts. Now he's trying to become an A-level fighter in BKFC. July of last year is truly one of the best debuts we've ever seen in Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. Gian Herrera taking out the very talented Abdiel Velasquez in two rounds. Absolutely. Like I said, we haven't seen a de debut that good. Just been waiting for this guy to come back. I can't believe it's taken this long, but I'm so happy he's healthy now. He's ready to go. 
He's very confident right now. He feels like all he has to do is get in there and land those punches where he's very good. He's got good accuracy and he's got good power, and that's all it takes to be good in this sport. We saw that by John Dodson. Our main event at 135 pounds, the bout we just mentioned a moment ago, also 135 pounds. Travis Thompson, a veteran of BKFC1 versus the undefeated David Diaz. Travis Thompson genuinely does not like David Diaz. <laughs> so much so, it was a shoot, not a work. They were brought together for a video production element two nights ago. It ended quickly because they started to fight. In about 30 seconds, I believe, is when it happened. It didn't take long. These two guys went after each other. That thing was off, so they didn't really get any footage right there, but that's okay. These guys don't like each other. Travis feels slighted that he's even in there with the guy who's only had two fights. Diaz feels like, I'm undefeated. Who have you beat? So this is uh, the great rivalry we have right here. These guys are going to go at it tonight. Our third bout tonight at 135 pounds as this is truly a showcase for the bantamweights as we talked about at the top of our prelim broadcast. At 135 pounds, another undefeated fighter, Ryan Reber versus Jack Grady, who comes in off of his first win in BKFC. And Jack Grady is a wild man out there. He's yelling. He's crazy. He's giving these weird eyes. He's trying to intimidate, and sometimes that works. He did his last fight. He won. He knocked his opponent out after getting up off the canvas. Sean, you know how we love that. But Reber has just been fantastic every time he's fought for us right here. So it's going to be, can he get in the head? Can can Grady get in his head? Can he throw him off his game? Because he's very calm, cool, and collected usually. If he throws him off, that's going to be a good chance for Grady to go out there and capitalize. We also have about tonight at 125 pounds. This, I believe, could actually become the fight of the night. This is incredibly intriguing. J.R. Ridge versus Chancey Wilson. Both fighters come in at 2-1 and one in BKFC. J.R. Ridge has shown so much prowess, so much creative movement. He comes not from boxing, not from MMA, not from Muay Thai kickboxing, not from Letway, but from San Show. <laughs> that is his base. You'll see it in his footwork against Chansey Wilson. Chansey Wilson, talk about being thrown in the deep end of the pool. In MMA, he fights a pre-UFC Jeff Molina. In BKFC in his debut, he fights the 2016 U.S. Boxing Olympic bronze medalist Nico Hernandez. But now he has found his rhythm, enters victorious in his last two fights. The thing that's so amazing when you watch these two guys, just how fast they are. I, I can't even see the punches sometimes. Like I look down for the replay to see to slow it down a little bit. These guys are fast, accurate, clean punches. So very good fight right there. These are two of our better guys at that weight class. I think they're definitely looking to buy to see who can get that title fight. And Chris, our co-main event in the light heavyweight division. We'll talk about it throughout this broadcast. A pivotal fight, truly a crossroads fight for both men. The victor moves that much closer towards a title shot. Whoever loses this fight, presuming it's not a draw or a no <laughs> contest, they're not done by any means, but it's definitely a step back. Jared Warren versus Jay Jackson. We understand the stakes. Both fighters clearly understand the stakes. These guys are both great guys. They get along well, but they know what's at stake, like you said, John. And both guys are very similar. Their careers, their records, everything, they're very similar right now. So Jay Jackson wants to get in there, get in the pocket, land those hard punches. Warren wants to stay long, land that big two, but whoever wins is probably going to get a push for the title soon. The loser is going to have to come back, rebuild, to have two more fights just to get in this position again. So you do not want to lose this fight. A lot on the line for both guys. And our feature fight at 155 pounds, that's the BKFC lightweight division. Bobby Taylor versus in his BKFC debut, although he's 2-0 in the sport of bare knuckle, Gabriel Fryer. Great fight, different matchup right there. Friars going to want to stay outside, turn this into a boxing match. He feels like he can do it easily. Circle around, pop his jab, land his one, two, just move a lot. However, we've seen Bobby Taylor in there. He puts pressure on like nobody's business, pushes people around, lands big, hard shots. He's a strong individual. So very contrasting styles right there, but that's why we love a fight like that. Tonight, we're in Orlando, Florida. This is the first of three BKFC events coming to you in the month of November. Every event, of course, included in your monthly BKFC app subscription. November 18th, it will be a Friday night, Omaha, Nebraska. You see the main event in the heavyweight division, two UFC veterans. Joey Beltron versus a fighter who is undefeated in BKFC, Houston Alexander. That's intriguing, Chris. Beltron, the former bare knuckle fighting championship heavyweight titleist against Houston Alexander, who keeps on rolling. November 26th, bare knuckle fighting championship back in the United Kingdom. We'll move north from Wembley in London, where we were in August, to the great city of Newcastle. A heavyweight fight. This is a heavyweight title eliminator. McTurrell versus Steve Banks. November 26th, that is a Saturday night. Then we move into December with two more shows. 
VKFC, December 3rd from the Seminole Hard Rock in Hollywood, Florida. You see the lightweight world title fight, the undefeated champion Luis Palomino versus Tom Schoaf. And then BKFC Asia, December 10th. BKFC Asia will move from Thailand to our debut in Cambodia. When we return, it is our third and final prelim. You're with us live worldwide on the BKFC 32 Freeview. And a reminder, at the top of the hour, just under 30 minutes from now, our main card begins. The way to watch is on the BKFC app. Welcome to the new BKFC app. Watch every live Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship pay-per-view event for only $4.99 per month. Enjoy our all-new library of content, including behind-the-scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live Bare Knuckle fights from around the globe. Knuckle up with the new BKFC app, still only $4.99 a month. Tonight only, you'll receive 30% off all Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship merchandise when you use the promo code BKFC32 at BareKnuckleShop.com. Check out the huge selection of merch to choose from with sizes and styles for everyone. You can place your order now at BareKnuckleShop.com. And again, a reminder, you can use the promo code BKFC32 at checkout to get 30% off your entire purchase. We are set now for about a 145 pounds. Crescent Tools brings you our tale of the tape for Brandon Allen versus Josh Marr. Once again here, Sean, nothing too different about these guys. The only thing I'm seeing is it's like a four centimeter bigger fist for Josh Marr. Let's see if that makes any difference. Maybe more surface area to punch Brandon Allen. I'm not sure. This is the BKFC debut for Josh Marr. His second bout tonight in the sport of bare knuckle fighting. He's also had five pro MMA bouts in our fighter meeting. Marr told us he wants to be aggressive, but not recklessly aggressive. He said, I'm going to use feints, keep cutting angles, but I don't want to overcommit on my punches and on my forward steps. Feels like he definitely wants lots of movement here. You talked about the feints. Wants to put a lot of pressure on. He wants to push his opponent against a rope to do work from there. Of his opponent, Brandon Allen, in this featherweight bout, Marr told us, I think Allen will continually look to counter and run, but I have to be aware of his right hand. I can't let Allen stay on the outside and keep circling. I have to cut angles, and as you just said, as he told us, put Brandon Allen's back against the ropes. Two fights in BKFC for Brandon Allen. His most recent coming this past July, he defeated Steve-O Morris by unanimous decision. And Steve-O Morris was on a roll, but Brandon Allen came out and looked phenomenal here. Did a great job of staying relaxed, fighting when he wants to fight. Look at that nice, clean little left hand on the inside. Does not mind being in a slow pace fight. He said he never wants to be in a fight of the night. I thought that was hilarious because he said a fight of the night means you took some, you gave some. I don't want to take any. I want to stay on the outside and punch my guy when he need to get on the inside, but I don't want to be reckless. I want to be smart. Just like that fight right there. Steve-O was doing very well. However, Brandon Allen looked fantastic and got the victory. Brandon Allen, one quote of the week when he said he never wants to be <laughs> in the fight of the night. Instead, he told us in our fighter meeting, I want a smart defensive showcase and I want to utilize, quote, active patience. Allen also said, do not waste punches. This is bout number three in BKFC for Brandon Allen. He's also had five in amateur boxing, seven in AMI MMA, but he feels that bare knuckle is his sport. You know, Sean, I didn't know whether to be offended or not. I had six fighter nights, but when he told <laughs> me that, I said, you know what, you're right. I don't like to take all those punches. So wants to have a very active jab out there. Doesn't want to let his opponent get comfortable at all. Utilize the sweet science right there. Hit and don't get hit. Allen also told us precision over power. 
He said of Josh Moore, I feel he's going to be very aggressive. I'm going to use that aggression against him. I'm going to literally make Moore walk into my punches. He's going to make him walk into his punch or walk into a knockout. He feels like this is going to be his coming out party. He wants to make a statement right there. He wants to let everybody on notice that he's the guy to beat. Back we go to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, we are set for the next fight of the night. Scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the featherweight division. Presented to you by Lions Not Sheep Apparel. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight, he wears red trimmed in white and black. He stands five feet, eight inches tall. His official weight, an even 146 pounds. He holds an MMA record of five fights and tonight makes his BKFC debut. Fighting out of Atlanta, Georgia. Here is Josh Danger Mar. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears black trimmed in the proud colors of the United States of America. He stands five feet, nine inches tall. His official weight, 144.2 pounds. His bare knuckle record stands at one victory opposite a single defeat. Fighting out of St. Pete, Florida. Here is Brendan Superman Allen. And our referee in charge of the action, Andrew Glenn. First appearance of the night for the outstanding referee Andrew Knuckle Glenn. Up. The call of knuckle up from Glenn, round number one. Black and American flag trunks for Brandon Allen. Red and black trunks for Josh Moore. You can only see right now Allen using that good motion right there. In and out, just when it needs to be just outside those punches. Allen staying elusive. You see the head movement? The left hand did not land. That was Allen taking himself back. Coming forward, missing with the right hand, counter right hand, misses by Brandon Allen. And that's what Moore needs to keep doing. Keep coming forward with his opponents leaning back like that. He runs out of real estate. Just keep coming forward and throw those punches. It's the jab from Brandon Allen. High tight striking guard for Josh Moore. Level changes for Moore. There's the stiff jab. 115 remaining, round number one. Naked right hand from Brandon Allen. Overhand right just misses from Moore. And that's ruled a slip by Andrew Glenn. Snap jab from Brandon Allen. Cannon, that's a clean knockdown on the left hand. That was a nice clean shot. Moore is still hurt right now. He needs to try and relax, step back a little bit, move, get the clinch if he can. Moore telling Andrew Glenn, yeah. When he asked, do you want to fight? That's what a referee is looking for. Glenn hears that, yeah, from Allen. Brother from Moore allows his fight to continue. Painting round number one from Brandon Allen. Allen on the counter. Final seconds, round number one. Moore cut badly on the first knockdown outside of his right eye. Counter right hand from Allen. That is the end of round one. Good job of Mara right there. He was still hurt a little bit, but he was able to weather that storm right there. He needs to work on getting inside, pushing forward, and landing punches as he's backing up. Brandon Allen. Hey, tie the elbows. That block, his punch is coming straight in. You got to close it a little bit tighter. Here's a look at that first knockdown. Wait for Mara to open up a little bit right there. Do that lead right hook. Left his chin wide open. Here's a second one. Little combination right there. Just a nice stiff jab right there that landed. Don't try to reach. I know he's tall. You got to use your footwork to get in. And then throw. All right? Footwork, get in, get out. Get in, get out. Once you're in, that's when we throw. All right, let's go. Hey, you're alive now. The first knockdown was exactly what Brandon Allen line. talked about, Chris, in our fighter meeting. I'll make Josh Moore literally walk into my big punches. Now, I don't know if you can hear the 
corner in by Diego Lima had that great advice. Get inside. That's when you throw your punches. You got to work to get in. You can't start throwing these heavy punches from outside just like that. You're going to get countered. Round number two, presumably 10 seconds across the board for Brandon Allen. Uh, staying on the outside. Overhead right misses from Marr. Credit to Josh Marr pulling himself off the canvas twice in round number one. You see cut inside of his left brow, outside of his right brow. It's just that speed. Big jab! Knocked down number three. No, that's ruled a slip by Andrew Glenn. It's just that speed and precision right now. Brandon Allen is just really frustrating Marr. Overhand right from Brandon Allen. Snap jab again. That jab really there right now for Allen. And that now is ruled as knockdown number three in this fight. I mean, it almost looks like Ma hurt his knee or something. He's just falling. You want to fight? Andrew Glenn allowing this fight to continue. But now most definitely keeping a closer look. Left hand again from Brandon Allen. Allen said hit and don't get hit. So far, that's largely what he's doing. Josh Marr, though, staying very game, but now on his back foot. Jab again from Allen. Allen's eyes are just so good, he just gets out of the way about an inch, and then he fires back with another punch. Very good eyesight right there for Allen. Two swings, two misses from Josh Marr. Allen's proving to be extremely elusive. There's a right hand from Josh Marr. Marr showing a lot of toughness, a lot of heart in this fight, down officially three times in this fight. Now 15 seconds remaining, round two. Big swing, counter left. Allen taking himself into Andrew Glenn. Up down movement from Moore. Next stop, round three. And so Lorenzo Hunt, one of two double champions at BKFC, the other, of course, being Luis Palomino. This was not ruled a knockdown, Chris. Watch the jab of Alex. Looked like a jab letter, but I think it was the throwing of that punch and getting himself off ballot by Maul. That's why it wasn't called a knockdown. And that was ruled a knockdown. Looked very similar, right. so <laughs> not sure why they called one about the other. All right, let's go. Come on, keep fighting, baby. Let's Andrew go. Glenn, not only is my good friend, he's one of the best combat sports referees in the come world, on. so I will not second guess him in that sequence. Well, whatever he saw, I'll accept that. Round number three. That is a clean knockdown off the jab. Just a nice, perfectly timed, perfectly placed jab. We talked about it, so it's not how hard it lands. Sometimes it's where it lands. Officially knocked down number four. Now, if you don't see the punch coming, those are the ones that hurt, and that's exactly what happened right there. There's the left hand hook jab lands from Mar. Make no mistake, one way traffic for Brandon Allen to this point. Counter left hand knocked down number five, straight off the counter. I mean, Allen's counters are so crisp, so clean, just perfectly placed. It's the placement over the power, just as Brandon Allen talked about. Not one of the five knockdown punches have been thudding, but they've been beautifully timed, beautifully placed. And a lot of times it looks like Allen's being knocked back, but he's doing that to himself just... Rolling with the punches and get out of the way so he doesn't get hit clean. 50 seconds remaining, round three. Counter left hand, right hand, Allen circling out. Like I said, Allen does a good job of not taking those clean, hard shots. He rolls with the punch, he moves, he flies out of the way. Smile on the face of Brandon Allen. I don't think there was a mocking smile. I think he's just really enjoying himself. I mean, Omar's doing a lot of good things out there. He's just got a very tough opponent right now. Knockdown number six. Third here in round three. This fight is over. Moore told Andrew Glenn he wanted to continue. Glenn did not like what he saw. And a big win for Brandon Allen. He's now victorious in two.
two straight in BKFC. And Sean, he said he wanted to have him a coming out party, he wanted to make a statement. That was a statement right there. He just continued to land good punches. He looks very comfortable out there right now. Just gets yeah, better and better fight. each fight. Six knockdowns recorded in total for Brandon Allen. There's just that, those fast hands right there, those fast, accurate punches is exactly what you need this for, and that's what Brandon Allen has. Just waiting for his opponent to come in. As soon as the opponent steps forward, landing that punch magnifies the power when he's coming forward. Well, Josh Moore showed fight of the night heart. And you see, even after being dropped for the sixth time, extremely disappointed the referee Andrew Glenn did not allow this fight to continue. But again, Andrew Glenn is an outstanding referee in MMA and in bare knuckle. And six is just too many, Chris. Well, and, and you love the fact that Mark continues to say, yes, I want to keep fighting. I want to keep fighting. But he was going down from shots that jabs you know he just was not getting hit with clean or, or hard punches he was still going down a lot so I, I, that's why i think the referee said enough is enough you saw diego lima the ufc veteran in the corner of josh Marr. Marr gave a really good account of himself in defeat and brandon allen gave an a plus account of himself in victory here's jeff houston Ladies and gentlemen, our referee in charge, Andrew Glenn, calls a stop to this fight at 1 minute 45 seconds into round number three. For your winner by TKO, Brandon Superman Allen! Sean, what a performance right there. The best one we've seen against a very game opponent. Brandon Allen's going to be a force to be reckoned with in this division. Brandon Allen talked about, quote, active patience, talked about a, quote, defensive showcase, check and check. Brandon Allen knocking down Josh Mark twice in round one, once in round two, and three times to the finish in round three. The winner, by way of third round TKO, Brandon Allen defeats Josh Mark. I got these for you right here. Welcome to the new BKFC app. Watch every live Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship pay-per-view event for only $4.99 per month. Enjoy our all-new library of content, including behind-the-scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live Bare Knuckle fights from around the globe. Knuckle up with the new BKFC app, still only $4.99 a month. Well, he became a combat sports A-lister when he was in the UFC. Since coming to BKFC, he has become a combat sports superstar. Mike Perry is with us. Mike, always great to see you, brother. Let's go. I'm out here. Orlando, we out here. And uh, don't nobody want to get in the ring with Orlando's number one badass bare-knuckle boxer. It's Platinum Mike Perry, you already know. August 20th, we were at Wembley Arena in London. Your fight versus Michael Venom Page. Just the second time in BKFC history, going to that sixth round, that extra time round. How do you feel that that fight, that win, stacks, ranks with the wins that you accomplished throughout your MMA career as well? It just makes me curious as to what is coming, what is coming up next. Um, I mean, speaking of what's coming up next, you know, we all want to see 
I, you know, I only want to see people who want to see themselves in here competing and trying to better themselves in this ring, in this arena, because this is something only the toughest can really get their mind wrapped around. Only the toughest guys, even some of the toughest guys you know in the UFC and other big organizations, they're afraid to come in here <laughs> and fight with us and bare knuckles. So that's why I say I see myself on top because a lot of guys don't want this Platinum Perry smoke bare knuckle boxing. Hey, that last fight, you had to go the sixth round. You had to go to overtime. You looked extremely tired, but you dug deep and you found is that, I mean, does that give you a certain confidence knowing you feel like nothing can happen to you, that you're not going to keep coming forward? Uh, that, see, that nothing can happen to me thing, that's not what I think. I honestly believe uh, in what could happen to me, uh, that I could be dismembered and distorted and torn apart. And uh, because of that, I make sure I swag out in there and I carry myself in this very classy, uplifting manner because I'm trying to be something in this dirty world. And um, and that's a king among, you know, savages. <laughs> Mike, you know that whatever you say is going to go viral. Is there anyone that you're looking <laughs> for next in BKFC? Whoever wants this smoke, man, I mean, we, we know there's names out there that's not going to hear the call out. They're, they're, they're going to ignore it and they act like it never happened. So, I mean, the world honestly wants to see me and Nate Diaz go. I mean, I honestly think based off of my fight with Tim Dirty Bird uh, that the Nate Diaz fight would make a lot of sense. He could pepper me from the outside and he could and I could struggle to get in on him. But me knowing my new winning self, I wouldn't have that struggle. Maybe that's maybe he understands that. Uh, so, you know, maybe that's not a real call out. I don't know what the call out is. I've called out some big names. Who are the smaller names? Um, I saw Dave Mundell tonight and I told him, man, fuck that champion guy. He's such a fucking bitch, man. Fuck that guy. <laughs> he fights on the outside. He acts scared. He tries to paw you with his distance and his jab. I said, get in there and fucking hit his ass in the face and see, you know, what he's really about. And I fought Dave and I've I've been in the gym fighting that Francesca girl. So, you know, she can get it anytime. I don't know why it wasn't offered to me, but mad respect, mad props to Dave. Don't let the pressure get on your shoulders, bro. Go take that motherfucker, show him what a real fighter is. Glad to Mike Perry. Always great to see you, brother. Hey, thanks for being here, man. And I would love to see you fight Diaz. I can't wait to see if that can actually happen. One of the true superstars, not just in BKFC, but in the world of combat sports. Mike Perry with us live ringside. We are here in Orlando. Cyrus, we're closing in on top of the hour when our main card begins from Carib Royale, BKFC 32. Oh, man. You know, this, this has been so special. This free view has lived up to the hype. For sure, setting the whole tone for the event. You're talking about three big knockouts, two of them within what the first 60 seconds of the fight period. I mean, we are setting this crowd ablaze here in the Carib Royale. And then that last one, I mean, you talk about what was it? Mar got up six or seven times, knocked down, kept getting up, and he had to be saved by the referee from himself. That's how tough he was. So, incredible action already here but you guys know that you have to get the app if you want to make it happen now here's what we got coming up if you get the app 499 this is what you're going to get here in the next few weeks in two weeks on the 18th we're going to omaha for bkfc 33 big match up there beltron alexander on top they always light it up in omaha then we're going back across the pond bkfc uk and as you saw in london there are a lot of great UK fighters that are showing out in bare knuckle fighting. That is gonna be a can't miss event. Then we move on, December 3rd, we'll be back in Florida, Hollywood, Florida, at our home base. It's a big show December 3rd, BKFC 34, multiple titles on the line in that event. And then finally, you gotta love this because there's a little mystery out here, right? December 10th, BKFC Asia, live from Cambodia. Yeah, you heard me right. Live from Cambodia, it's all going down right here on BKFC as we wrap up an incredible 22, what has been an absolute historic year to say the least. 
Now you got to get the app. It's very simple. Get the app, $4.99. You're going to get the rest of this incredible card. As you can see, with all the knockouts, it's going to be a good one in Orlando. So don't miss out on the rest of this incredible card. We'll see you at the top of the hour for BKFC 32.
Time to go humble somebody. I've never been impressed with anything that he does. Very one dimensional. He's in my way now. And if you don't want to move, then I will move you myself. Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship makes its return to the theme park capital of the world. Live in Orlando, Florida, from Caribe Royale. It's BKFC 32, Barnett versus Herrera. And it starts right now. witnessed some magical moments in the squared circle throughout the years. But now the baddest fighters on the planet are back, ready to make a whole new highlight reel. The main card is absolutely full of firepower. How about Jessica Borga, Sarah Click, then of course our feature bout, Bobby Taylor, Gabriel Fryer. Both of these warriors in the co-main event, Jay Jackson and Jared Warren, ready to show out and potentially get into title contention. Then the main event, a blistering bout between the uber exciting Gian Herrera and one of our current bantamweight kings, Reggie Barnett Jr. And welcome to the fabulous Caribe Royale here in Orlando, Florida, where it has already been electric in the free view. Three big knockouts if you're keeping score at home. We are having a ton of fun here in Orlando, and it's only going to get better from here. That being said, Let's talk about our good friends at DraftKings. That's right, new customers can bet $5 on any fighter to win and get $200 in free bets. If they get the W, go to DraftKings Sportsbook, enter the code Knuckles to play now. All right, it is time to go to our guys ringside as this crowd is hungry for bare knuckle action. Sean and Chris, we've already seen some incredible action just in the preview, so you know business is about to pick up here in Orlando. Cyrus, thank you very much. Chris, our main event in the stacked BKFC 135-pound division. Reggie Barnett versus Gian Herrera. Herrera is a UFC veteran. Barnett is a nine-fight BKFC veteran. That's the big thing here, Sean. You got Herrera who has just nothing but a high pedigree, great fighting skills. We've seen him fight nothing but the best, but you got a guy with Reggie Barnett, great experience. So is it going to be the, the high caliber or is it going to be the experience that's going to pay off here? We're going to find out. Chris, your keys to victory for both main event fighters are presented by Nerd Focus. Okay, you can see here for Herrera, the main thing, he's got to dictate when the fight happens because he wants to get into that pocket. And when he's in the pocket, he wants to throw power punches. He doesn't want to let his opponent decide when and where he wants to get in there. Look at that, boom, nice hard left hand, hard right hand. When this guy gets in and lands those power punches, you're in trouble. Now, Reggie Barnett on the other end, he wants to control the reins. He wants to use that in and out motion, either all the way in or all the way out, just like this, pushing his way in. Utilize that speed advantage he has. He's got very quick hands, and he does not want to get gritty. When he gets inside in the pocket, he's landing combinations. He doesn't want to stay there and wait for the return from her. Get in, get out. That's how he wins this fight, utilizing that speed and utilizing that part of not getting gritty. Jam-packed here at the stunning Kareem Royale in Orlando. We open our main card with about at 205 pounds, Jonathan Miller versus Stefan Reese. You can see here, Sean, very similar on all aspects. Even fifth side, very similar. This is not going to be about who's going to have the greatest reach. This is gonna, who's going to come in, land the first hard punch, implement their game plan. Our numbers, as always, presented by Crescent Tools. He's had seven fights in his pro MMA career. In our fighter meeting, Reese said 
I throw volume when needed, and I throw power when needed. But regardless, accuracy is my key to victory. Key to victory, and feels like puts a premier on defense. He does not want to take damage in the fight. Wants to be aggressive, wants to slip punches, be accurate, not taking damage. Reese also said, I want to utilize aggressive counter punching. I want to work in the pocket, but not in the clinch. I'll use slips, and importantly, I will make my opponent, Jonathan Miller, pay and pay dearly every time he swings and misses. Feels like his opponent doesn't fight well backing up. He wants to push him, keep him on the back of his feet. If he can do that, he feels like he cannot let his opponent get offensive from the back of his foot there. Definitely staying long is an advantage for Reese. Feels like he has the power. All he has to do is land one good shot. This is the BKFC debut for Jonathan Miller. He's had one pro MMA bout, one in pro boxing, one in pro kickboxing. He described himself to us in our fighter meeting as a counter striker. He said, I want to stay long, I want to read and react, I want to utilize excellent head movement from the outside. Being a big fan of the sport, he said he understands the person who gets off first usually wins. So he wants to try and do so. Utilize strikes off the clinch, get inside and use that fight, high fight IQ to get easy shots. Jonathan Miller also told us, I think Stefan Reese is going to swing big continually for the knockout. I have to step back, avoid those power shots, and start landing my jab off of my opponent's power swings. Feels like his opponent throws big shots and ducks his head down. He wants to land those uppercuts, but the main thing for him, defense, avoid those power shots, Sean. Started from Orlando, Florida, we send it to the always outstanding Jeff Houston. Hello, hello, hello! Orlando! Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the magnificent Carib Royale here in Orlando, Florida. And welcome to the most exciting combat sport on planet Earth today. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to BKFC 32! We are set for the next fine of the night, scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the cruiserweight division, presented to you by OnlyFans. Introducing you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight, he wears black. He stands five feet, nine inches tall. His official weight, 203.4 pounds. He is an MMA veteran of seven fights, and tonight makes his BKFC debut, fighting out of Ocala! Florida. Here is Stefan Slugga Reese. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight he wears red. He stands six feet, one inch tall. His official weight, 205.9 pounds. He holds a combined combat record of three fights and tonight makes his BKFC debut. Fighting out of Pensacola, Florida, here is Jonathan Big Baby Miller. And our referee in charge of the action, Big Dan Mergliata. This and all bouts tonight are scheduled for five two-minute rounds. Tonight's three judges have been assigned by the outstanding Florida Athletic Commission. Both fighters up to scratch, three feet apart, round number one. Red trucks for Jonathan Miller, black trucks for Stefan Reese. Two powerfully built 205 pounders. Slight forward pressure from Miller from the center circle. And with the rear right hand for Reese. Reese has a very square stance right now. He's wide open for all punches. 
Slight forward pressure from Reese, backed off by that right-handed feint of Miller. Now to the inside. Half tie plum held by Jonathan Miller. There's the separation from Dan Mogliotti. Snap jab from Reese. 115 remaining, round number one. He's continually moving his rear right hand, overhand right by Miller, then full land into the clinch separation again from Mogliotti. And you just get the feel right now, just watching this. He's just looking up to land that one big right hand. Jab to the body from Stefan Reese. Overhand right, there's the duck under, big swing. Well, we're just missing with that rear right hook. Continual head movement, upper body movement from Jonathan Miller. Now it's Miller coming forward. Side step from Stefan Reese. Checked his footing. Jab to the body out there. To the clinch. Reese eludes that overhand right. Jab left hook and down goes Stefan Reese. Flat on his back. Taking the mandatory eight from Mowgli Nice clean punch, that's all it takes, and Brand Uncle, he learned that by watching, and he implemented it right there. Great job. Miller talked about reading and reacting, he read, and then he reacted with this left hook. It's almost like a, like a jab right there, son. Just a nice punch, nice, fast pop. It's almost a hook jab, Chris. Yeah, yeah, it was a, it, it was a fast, fast punch that just landed right on the button. Pop. Got a conventional jab, a little bit of a turn. It was perfectly timed, perfectly placed, with a lot of power on that from Jonathan Miller. You can tell the way these two, these two big fellas were throwing punches and something landed, it was gonna hurt. Stefan Reese told us, Jonathan Miller definitely has power. He said, I have to test that power and land my own power shots. But it was Miller indeed with that power punch. Putting Reese flat on his back, taking the full count of 10 from Dan Mergliata and a big BKFC debut at 205 pounds for Jonathan Miller. So you can tell sometimes when people are not used to getting hit with that bare knuckle, it's different, it changes. It takes you a minute to react like, what just happened? I'm not, I've been hit. Many, many times it's never felt like that, and I think that's what happened right there. We send it to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, our referee, Big Dan Mergliata, reaches the count of 10 at 1 minute 44 seconds into round number one. For your winner by KO, Jonathan Big Baby Miller. Huge win for Miller right there, Sean. Looked really good, poised, relaxed. Looked like he was a student of the game and he implemented that plan, got off first and won the fight. Jonathan Miller talked to us about power. He talked to us about patience and he exhibited both. One punch to the win. Victorious by way of first round KO. Jonathan Miller defeats Stefan Reese. Later this evening, you'll see our co-main event, a pivotal fight for both men in the light heavyweight division. Jared Warren versus Jake Jackson. I see Jay Jackson as being the kind of guy who stays in there and scraps a little bit. So that leaves it a lot more open for opportunity for a nice KO. I know I'm prepared for anything. I've been training really hard. I expect a really good show. One way or the other, five rounds or a dope ass KO. I'll be ready for both. I think uh, I think if he stands there and tries to bang, it really only has to be one clean shot, and it can be a, it can be an early night for him. I'm gonna try to dodge him, and I'm gonna try not to get hit by that shit because I don't want to lose. Uh, I think he I probably is a decent boxer, but you know I, I could I could see him being a little flat-footed, maybe a little bit slower than me. For him to win, that would have to be uh, something uh, miscalculated on my side, but. I don't think that he has any any strengths over me. Um, 
so I really think it's going to be a, a good night for me. We're the co-main event, and I think they chose the right guy to do so, you know what I mean, because I put on bangers. Captain Deadpool, we meet again. One and only Jared Warren backstage here. And I'll tell you, man, I'm excited about this matchup, co-main event, both you guys coming off of W's right now. What's it going to take to take out a guy like Jay Action Jackson? It's going to take a lot of uh, forward pressure, man. I, uh, I know he likes to get in there and bang, move around. I don't think he's the type to run away. So uh, I got I to gotta bring that pressure to him. Well, you know, getting that win over Jomi Escoboza, that was obviously big for you. How did it feel to get that win, get back on the winning track, and just and kind of move in the right direction here at BKFC? It felt amazing, man. I had a little uh, snafu right before that fight, but it does. It felt like it catapulted me right back to the top and uh, gave me the highest form of competition here, and I like to just keep keep pushing on through, man. Well, see, the one thing that we saw in that last fight is that you can go the distance and get the W. It doesn't have to be a finish. That being said, I think everybody at home knows everybody wants to see a finish out of you. They want to see that big knockout. Mm -hmm. What can we expect tonight out of Captain Deadpool? I would say if it makes it out of the first, it's going to be fight of the night. Just like that. There mm -hmm. it is. You'll see him in the co-main event against Jay Jackson tonight, BKFC 32 in Orlando. That being said, let's get to our next matchup. Let's go to the Crescent Tools. Tell the tape. In the bantamweight division, Ryan Reber versus Jack Grady. You can see here's on a significant four-inch reach advantage for Reber. Going to be important because he likes to stay outside, pick his shots, be methodical, work his way in. Grady wants to come in and throw bombs. So Ripper's going to want to make him pay. Keep him long and stay outside to make Grady pay every time he comes forward. Two fights in BKFC for Jack Grady. His most recent this past March, he defeated Gabe Sacchetti by second round knockout. And you can just see Grady comes in, wild eyes, acting crazy. Just a tough individual. And this shows it right here. Getting up off the canvas several times. Continue to get punched. Doesn't deter him. He's been down before, but he knows he can continue to take this. So it's right there. That was his third time being knocked down. But he says, okay, I've been the nail. Let me be the hammer now. Look at that good right hand. Just landed a nice clean punch. And this gave him the confidence. He says, I've taken your best. I don't think you can take mine. And just continues to come with hard shots. Feeling it right there. Look at that, that sneaky overhand right place. But he feels like it's all about placing the shots. Got the victory. Feels very confident. Look at that look in this guy's face. He's a maniac, Sean. He's coming to fight tonight. He's excited to be here. Jack Grady set for his third bout in BKFC. He's also had 11 fights in his pro boxing career. Grady told us in our fighter meeting that in training for this bantamweight bout versus Ryan Reber, he is really focused on improving his speed, improving his conditioning. Grady said, I'm going to keep coming forward. I am most definitely willing to take shots from Reber to land my own shots. Feels like he wants to get off first, land that one, two, doesn't want to fight from distance, get inside, jump on his opponent right away and try to get a quick stoppage. Grady said, I truly believe that Ryan Reber will break both mentally and physically due to my constant pressure. I'm going to work to the pocket, stay in the pocket, make this rugged, and keep flurrying from the inside. Know that as he punches, as he makes his opponent punch, as he misses those he wants to make sure he makes him pay each time. Counter after his opponent misses, key for him to win this fight. Ryan Reber, 2-0 in BKFC as he enters this bout. His most recent victory occurring this past July, he defeated Rick Caruso by fourth round TKO. And you can see he has it when he has to throw it. He has to be in there and mix it up. He will, but he likes to stay long. He likes to be very methodical. He's smart. Look at that right there. It's a nice clean one-two. This is how he wants to buy. wants to stay outside, wants to box, wants to hit, not get hit. He can mix it up when he has to, but that's not what he chooses to do. He wants to be smart. He wants to be a pugilist. He wants to go out there and dominate from afar. It's up to him to keep this fight long and keep this a smart fight. That's how he feels. He has the ability. He has the skills. He's just got to display it tonight.
This is a fight featuring two big personalities, Jack Grady being one and Ryan Reber being the other. In addition to being 2-0 in BKFC, Reber, a veteran of 12 amateur boxing bouts, 2 in AMI MMA, and 2 in amateur kickboxing, Reber said through his first two vertical fights, he really feels that he has improved his footwork. He said, I'm going to set up everything with my jab, precise punches mixed with that great footwork. That, and he wants to throw a lot more feints this time. He wants to throw punches upstairs to get his opponent to bring his hands up. But he's desperate. He really wants to land some hard body shots. He said he hasn't got to do that yet in training. He feels like that works very well. Bare knuckles, he can land a body shot. He feels like he's going to win the fight. There is genuine heat, not manufactured, but genuine heat between Ryan Reber and Jack Grady. Reber said of Grady, he's the loudest guy in the room. And in my experience, the loudest guy in the room is also the weakest guy in the room. Here again, Jeff Houston. Fight fans of Orlando, we are set for the next fight of the night. Scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the bantamweight division. Presented to you by Crescent Tools. Introducing you first. Fighting out of the red corner, tonight he wears green and gold. He stands five feet nine inches tall, his official weight, an even 134 pounds. His bare knuckle record stands at one victory opposite a single defeat. Fighting out of Buffalo, New York. Here is Jack Shady Grady. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears leopard print trimmed in black. He stands five feet, nine inches tall. His official weight, 134 and one half pounds. He holds an undefeated bare knuckle record at two and zero. Oh. Fighting out of Clearwater, Florida, by way of New London, Connecticut. Here is Royal Ryan Reaver. And our referee in charge of the action, Andrew Glenn. Jack Grady said, Ryan Reaver is a slow starter. I will take full advantage. Switch of stances on the scratch line, round number one. Switch of stances right back for Jack Grady. He's in the green trucks. Leopard print trucks for Ryan Reber. Over from the southpaw, looping on the jab, naked two to the body. Now into the clinch goes Jack Grady. Short left hand, obvious headbutt there by Jack Grady, spotted by referee Andrew Glenn, who calls time. Yeah, that was blatant. Just throwing pushes in inside and then his head up to him. Dr. Don Muzi, the chief medical officer of BKFC, now being brought onto the apron. That is what's called a hard warning in referee speak sure by Andrew okay. Glenn. Right. Just want to make sure he's not cut open or anything. Right, step over there. Come here. Come here. One point. Headbutt. One point. Headbutt. One point. Headbutt. The hard warning from Andrew Glenn is next time it's a DQ, this time it's a point deduction. And that, that, that's the right call right there. We got to get this fight in control right now. You can't let him continue to do that type of thing. Time in. After the one point deduction to Grady, for what's deemed by Andrew Glenn is an intentional headbutt. Illegal, of course, by Jack Grady. 115 remaining round number one. Grady doing a lot of work in here. I'm not sure if much of it's landing, but definitely the aggressor right now. Grady on the overhand right. You see posting with his left forearm to the inside. Call a break from Andrew Glenn. Overhand right, counter right hand from Reber with his back against the road. Short left hand, overhand right from Grady. And I think Reber right now is just trying to weather this storm and let this, this juggernaut right now just wear himself out. He's just coming with everything. That's hard to do for that long shot. So I think he's just waiting to see if Grady can continue this for more than one round. Watch your head, watch your head. Come on. You heard Andrew Glenn tell Grady, watch your head. Left hook not fully there for Grady. Overhand right again. Jack Grady back into the pocket. Putting his forehead on the upper chest of Ryan Reber. Ryan Reber having a very difficult time getting his offense going here in the opening round. Hey, 
Closing stages, round number one. Adjustment of trucks from Reber. Reber resetting, overhand left, misses on the entry. Brady was pushed back. Now high tight striking guard. Here's the first flurry of the fight from Ryan Reber. Illegal on the head chancery. That might be a point deduction. When your moment finally arrives, and all your hard work, dedication, and loyalty to your craft is clear for all to see, your results will speak for themselves. Because when you need the hardest hitting tools on the market, you reach for the brand that always knows how to throw down, each and every time. Crescent Tools, trusted by the trades. Ryan Reber did not get a point deduction, but a hard warning from Andrew Glenn. Glenn telling Reber, quote, keep your cool. He thinks that's going to restrict you from Brady in that round just spent a lot of energy. He threw everything at his opponent right there. A lot of it was wasted energy. They weren't landing, but he was really trying to take the pace. I don't think you can keep that pace up for five rounds. If you thought that Grady won that round with the point deduction, it's a 9-9. If you thought Reber won it with the point deduction, it's a 10-8. To round number two we go. Flurry from Reber. Brady backing off against the ropes, resetting in the center circle. We thought this would be a fun fight. This is a fun fight. Short overhand right again, chest to chest for it on the chest for Jack Grady. And that's what Grady do his best work inside. Stiff jab from Grady. Brady resetting, pulling himself back center circle. Watch the fingers, keep the fingers on Brady. Now Glenn telling Brady, don't extend the fingers. And look at that huge advantage right now for Grady. Throwing 70 punches and 28 men in a high percentage right there. Again, single-mindedly, effectively to the inside comes Jack Brady. Watch the elbow, watch the elbow. First now Andrew Glenn telling Grady, watch the elbow. The headbutt, the fingers, the elbow. He's trying to get every part of it. Got the head trick going right now, Sean. Waiting, for the, clean, waiting for the foot stomp <laughs> and the fish hook, Chris. It's coming. Jab in the counter, jab right back from Ryan Reber. Again, driving in effectively is Jack Grady, keeping Ryan Reber's back against the ropes. Brady cut outside of his left brow. Reber needs to start getting off first. When he does, he does well. When he lets Grady come in, puts him in a bad position. Good tuck under from Grady on the rear right hand hook from Reber. Right now, Jack Grady is executing his game plan. That might be another point deduction. There was the headbutt again. That's it. Disqualification. Second headbutt. And Ryan Reber wins on the DQ. And here comes the ball. Wrestler. 
Turning a work into a shoot is yeah. never a work. Sean, everybody got in the action here besides us. There's Julian that's Lane that's in the red t-shirt coming in. I got him. Get off. Get him off. Get off. Get off. Mike Perry never left his front row seat. <laughs> Here's Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, due to an intentional headbutt, our referee in charge, Andrew Glenn, calls a stop to this fight at 1 minute 50 seconds into round number two. For your winner, by way of disqualification, Royal Ryan Reaver. And Sean, I know that's not how Reaver won to win this fight by disqualification, but Sometimes you have to take what you're giving the guy because he's even headbutt you. They're gonna they're gonna disqualify him. You cannot break the rules like that. And it wasn't just the headbutt. He was doing a lot of elbows, everything. What are you gonna do? Illegal headbutt, one point deduction from Andrew Glenn, the referee, to Jack Brady in round one. The second.